Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the podcast Strikes Back. My name is George and you're listening to the weekly movie show with the boys Connor Hello. and Benny. Hello there. Guys, pretty big week. Pretty big week this week. We've got plenty of stories. Solo is struggling at the box office. We're going to be talking about that later in Georgia Star Wars Corner. Jason Momoa is out of the crow. What the hell's going on there? <laughs> We're talking about it. And we've also got a little Ant-Man trailer to discuss. But fellas, look at, look at these beautiful men in front of me. Get to catch up with every week. What a pleasure. <laughs> what, a, what a great life I lead. And also, I get to hear about what everyone watched, Ooh. which will include The Office, I'm sure. <laughs> right? Connor? I think, I think I need to mention it this week. Oh, because man. <laughs> I have finally finished the American Office. Wow. Thank God. It is Pop done. The champagne. Seriously? <laughs> done. Crap. Completely done. Wow. Um, we can move on with our lives. <laughs> yeah, seriously. All three <laughs> of us. It got to that point um, where I was like, we need to watch this so we can finish it. I want to watch other things. I want to enjoy other things. So in a very general sense, what was the trajectory in terms of quality? Um, Over what, 10 seasons you Once, said? Uh, I thought it kind of went up, up until season about seven when they lost Michael Scott and that those two seasons after that were a bit weirder, a bit, um, they felt like season nine of Scrubs or not season nine, sorry, season eight. Ugh. Yeah. Um, right. Which, you know, I still enjoyed, but it really felt like they were trying to wrap things up and kind of give the show a meaningful exit. Um, and it, it made for a, for a cool finale, but yeah, the last two seasons seem a bit weird. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was always the issue with Scrubs. Was like that main cast left, and then they had to try and keep it going with the same brand, but it just wasn't the same show. Oh, like the spin? Yeah, no, no, that was that was a disaster. Yeah. I just mean like the last actual season of Scrubs, which I count as number eight. Okay, I don't, I don't think there was a nine. And how the um, ending go? The very end. Um. Yeah, it was. It was lovely. Like, <laughs> there's no other way to to describe it. Michael you know? Scott came back. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. He comes back for the final um episode or two episodes, whatever that they do. That it's it's really kind of typical. Let's you know, close off all the, the timelines. I, um, the one thing I really did enjoy about how they, or the trajectory that they took in the last couple of seasons is the relationship between Jim and Dwight. Um, it feels very kind of serving the fan base and, you know, that's where we want to see it in the America, uh, the, uh, UK office just kind of left everything in a jumble, which I, I appreciate oh. in its own oh. way. <laughs> Excuse me. It did. Like, Excuse I mean, me, good it, it, sir? Just, it ended in, <laughs> in you know, twelve episodes. And like it wasn't, oh, it wasn't a very fulfilling fuck. ending. Like, oh my lord, it's the most fulfilling shit you'll ever get, man. I'm, Dawn what? gets with fucking what's his name. <laughs> you know, I remember all the characters' names. How much? That's how much it meant to me. <laughs> um, no, it just, yeah, it felt like a good cap off to the journey. Does um, Ricky Gervais? I am very glad that it's over. Does Ricky Gervais make an appearance at all throughout the? Yeah. Uh, Oh, he does. Very, very, um, very briefly, he <laughs> interacts with um, Michael Scott. Okay. Um, very kind of funny. He he plays. Um, oh, what's what's his David character Brent. called? Him? Yeah, David Brent. Yeah. yeah, he plays David Brent. In right. It. Um, are they part of the same company or something? Are they? Are they? I are, think so. I can't even remember. Company? Yeah, yeah. Oh no, okay. no, like it's Thunder Mifflin Paper Company, okay, like yeah. all that kind of stuff. But it's um, uh, it's it's just a it's a fun little nod. Yeah. And it happens, you know, three seasons or four seasons before the that, end. That was probably the best, seasons. the best episode of the. the <laughs> That's where you should right? start. That's where yeah. you should start. <laughs> yeah. Thought so. Benny. Yeah. Um, I had the pleasure of watching all ten episodes, the entire series of AMC's The Terror. Um, that's that Ridley Scott produced. Um, okay. Arctic history. Yeah, we reviewed, horror. we reviewed the trailer, didn't we? We did. That looked we really ten interesting. Out of ten. Yeah. We'd never have to watch this. Yeah, a um, uh, lot of like character actors. Yeah, a lot of um, Jared Harris is kind of the main guy. Um, Moriarty from the second mm. Sherlock Holmes film, he's fucking phenomenal. He's so good in this. Um, and yeah, just like a bunch of like all the British people, you know, <laughs> everyone you've seen in Game of Thrones, they show up at some point. Um, really, really fucking cool. Uh, like I said, ten episodes. It's the entire story. It's the story of um, two ships in around eighteen fifty trying to find the Northwest Passage through the Arctic. Um, based off a real story, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Based off the two ships that just went missing, and they were discovered like three years ago um, in the Arctic, which is insane. Um, and did that kind of spark on the this project? So it's based on a book which came out before um, the uh, they, they were discovered. Yeah, okay. yeah, but there was a 
from the trailers, it looked like there was a supernatural element to this. Yeah, I don't want to say one way or the other, but there's definitely a lot of intrigue, and it's um, it's you know nobody knows what happened to them exactly, so it's highly fictionalized. Yeah. Um, but it's it is <clears throat> it is so cool. It is a bleak ten hours of TV, but it's it's fantastic. Um, not the there's some CGI stuff that's like not the greatest, which is unfortunate, but um, but otherwise you, the show is yeah, top notch. Yeah. But Does that really a, take a, you out. It's a standalone. Like, there's not going to be... If there is going to be another season, it's going to be an anthology series, so they're probably going to cool. do it something else. Which is cool, because the, then the title can have, like, a double meaning, because one of the ships is called the Terror. Okay. Which is why it's called the Terror, but yep. you can just keep making about these horrible expeditions going wrong. <laughs> um, I, I, that, that's, I think this is what I love about things like True Detective or even Galleon, you know, just self-contained series. That's why, actually, stuff like The Office, like the US Office... That volume of episodes, what? So 10 seasons are there, did you say? Uh, nine. Nine seasons, 20, 26 episodes a season, 23 episodes a season. Yeah, something like something that. Something to that. You know, we're talking about 240 episodes, yeah. 230 episodes. Like that George, That scares the shit yeah. out of me. George, you have a cap of six. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seriously, and True Detective, something like that, I believe eight episodes. Mm. Like that is, for me, one of my favorite things to I, one of my favorite TV series ever. And the best that's part all is, I wanted. The best part is that's the second it. season's garbage, so you don't even have yeah, to watch that one. Exactly. So it's just eight episodes. Exactly. Yeah. And, I, and no guilt. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. guilt at all. I yeah. think that, that those kind of TV series have their place. I think that, that you can't develop a character and give the, a character the same kind of arc as you can with you know something that has 200 episodes. Like They're just not going to be able to, to develop that relationship with a character in the same way. Um, so, yeah, I, I totally get why people like shows that have eight seasons of 20 episodes each. Like, I get that. Um, but, you know, you're right in saying that there's a there's a, a place for kind of smaller contained stories as well. Yeah, I can't really um, say one way or the other because I love the short shows, but also I'm a huge Doctor Who fan, which has run for about 35 yeah. seasons over yeah. 60, how, 60 how many years. <laughs> how many episodes per season of uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Uh, 20-something. 20 20 something, yeah. 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 And you love that. So, uh, you love that. How, I've never said such a thing. Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I told you that in confidence. <laughs> I watched... Uh, Nobody you, asked, George. Yeah, you, you, you already pulled that joke. You <laughs> no, can't do so that every joke. week, man. <laughs> Otherwise, it's bullying. Ben, you can. <laughs> <laughs> and I endorse it. <laughs> I endorse it. I'm going to go first next week. Fuck y'all. Uh, I watched an anime called Your Name. Been, been in a bit of an anime mood this week. Wow. Um, Emily, this is the um, highest... Uh, like the, the 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 highest box office earner in Japan for an anime, mm. um, it was on Netflix. Chucked it on, really cool, like a drama with some some interesting science fiction aspects to it, mm. um, or some kind of weird fantasy stuff. But a, a really fantastic movie, and and had some really clever stuff um, in terms of some of the stuff they did with time, time travel, and kind of things like that, and and. Uh, George does love a good evidently, time travel. Evidently, J.J. Abrams is going to be um, bringing this to, into no. a Hollywood Fuck. adaptation, <laughs> which I don't think, you know, I don't know. Like, it sounds kind of Christopher Nolan-y, but it's got a sort of high school aspect to it, like a high school drama mm. kind of aspect to it. So Nolan's not the guy for it, but J.J., he's got that more commercial, more wider audience appeal which w would make this work but and we've had a good know. history with um hollywood adaptations of anime what, what has he done in that i'm saying just in general yeah <laughs> they've all been great all, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> dragon ball man dragon ball evolution oh i don't remember that <laughs> do you remember the bit where you um in jumps dragon ball on the evolution? lava yeah he jumps yeah along with lava and that would like, i i just that's that was the moment where i said this is this is done this is, this is I, well see, and I truly do, done. Like I, I, I was holding out yeah. some semblance of hope. I wow. don't know whether it would have been worse or better to be like an avid fan of Dragon Ball because I, I never really got onto that um, really? train. Like I, I, I was never a big Dragon Ball guy. I was on that. So I remember watching that thinking like, if this was, some, if this was a property that really meant something to you, this would be devastating. It's really disturbing to me that all three of us have seen that film. <laughs> yeah. That was a long time ago. Yeah. I'd well, like to think we've we know better now. Um, so I'm completely wrong in those facts about <laughs> when, how, where it like how much of a commercial success it was. It's the <laughs> <laughs> somebody told me this anecdotally. Don't listen to people anecdotally. People. Go to Wikipedia. Okay, it's the only safe source. Um, I, it, it okay. So your name is the fourth highest grossing film of <clears> all <throat> time in Japan. Hey, 
I was three places off. Give me a break. Um, What's and the, the first three? Um, I couldn't tell you, my friend. I could click on this link. Oh, and, here we go. Uh, check it it's out. It's not that important. Spirited Never Away. Mind. Spirited Away, Titanic, Frozen, Your Name. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Titanic. Wow. House Moving Castle, Princess Mononoke, Bayside Shakedown 2. Yep. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. And Checks at out. number 10, Avatar. So there you go. That's the highest. So they kind of they like the first two Japan. Harry Potters, then kind of just like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this nah, is silly. It's a bit dark for us <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, that's bizarre. <laughs> oh well, cool. That's about it. That's about it. We'll see you next time, guys. No, um, let's do some news. Thanks, everyone. Maybe. Oh shit! Sorry. That's exactly what I was fucking. Hey, hey everyone, we're back. We're back, <laughs> had a bit of a technical malfunction there. Whoops. With uh, some liquids. Uh, <laughs> so, but some don't panic. worry, the, the uh, you know, the hub of the podcast and the, the uh, technical hardware that runs this whole operation is safe. Is, uh, yeah. still and intact. I've been down glad... Gladded, I've been downgraded from a glass of water to now a bottle of <laughs> with a cap on it. Yeah. We, we glued it shut as well. So. Yeah, you're, you're not in your safety zone there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put this next to my laptop now. We don't, we don't have to put the yellow lines on the table. Yeah, but yeah. We, <laughs> we don't want to get to that point where we're dividing space, but <laughs> this is mine. Safety zone exceeded. All right. Uh, so well, I, I guess we were going to do something today. We're going to do some news. Yeah. Back to where we, we <laughs> left off. <laughs> So, 15 minutes later. <laughs> um, the biggest news of the week, I guess. Uh, the Crow reboot that they've been trying to make for about 15 years has lost uh, Jason Momoa and director Corinne Hardy. Damn. Shock me. Shoot. So this is another, uh, another end to the, to the Crow reboot saga. Uh, let me just run through quickly. Since 2010, who's been cast as the Crow in reboots that did not get off the ground so we started with uh, mark Wahlberg, then bradley cooper was there for a while uh james mcavoy was in talks luke evans got cast um then jack houston and then jason momoa and that's in the last eight or seven eight seven years <laughs> it's like an actor per year yeah and- I, I i totally forgot mark Wahlberg. Was in the conversation because I, I very clearly remember Bradley Cooper mm. occupying Tom the spot Hiddleston, for a long I think, time. as well, was in talks for at some point. Uh, yeah, what a shame. No, it's awesome. It's good. What a Who shame. Can, we don't want to see this. I want to see it. Eh. I, I, I like these films that have this troubled production and they, you know, they they have this sort of like other otherworldly aspect to it because of all the troubles and, and trials and tribulations that it takes to make these things mm. come to fruition. You know, all the or what could it have been? They're just know, trying to get to those the, are the interesting conversations to have. Uh, they're yeah. trying to get to the point where they can say that the, this Crow reboot has had as troubled as production as the Crow original. They're not quite there yet because nobody's died, yeah. but um, they're working on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> have you guys? I, are you guys fans of the I, Crow? I'm, no, I'm not actually. I, I've, I've never seen it. Um, <laughs> this 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 has so little. Uh, for me, the the interest is the fact that it just can't get up off the ground. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what, like, I think it can go two ways. It's either, you know, you've got people that will only make it if it's done right, which seems to be one of the reasons that Jason Momoa left. That's at least what he alluded to in his, um, Instagram post. Um, but the other, the other side of it is that you can find people that will just get it onto the screen no matter what, and that they will cut corners or that they'll take compromise in order to make it. Um, and I think that is, um, that's worse than just never having attempted it at all. So it's it'll be interesting to see which avenue they take, um, or which which one eventuates. Um, whether if it ever does, if it ever I does, I think yeah. potentially the Crow reboot is just a place for actors and directors to say they're working when they're in between projects. It's like hey, I'm doing, I'm I've, no, I've got something in the pipe. This is what we're doing now. Yeah, and then as soon as I get something else, it's like oh no, that was no, no. yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Momoa is such a bad fit for the character as well. He's a mountain of a man. He's meant to be an ordinary he's, dude. Yeah. He comes yeah. back and is all gothy and skinny. Exactly. He's supposed to be... Yeah, he's gothic. He's weird. He's he's dark. And Momoa exudes not that. He, a bit too much of just, a bro. Yeah, he's just got <laughs> yeah. his tribal tats and he's like just a whole The crow man. too. My man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the crow, you know, we've had so many bad sequels with that, that um, film series. Mm. Have you seen uh, any of them? I've seen, I think I've seen two and I've seen, definitely seen two. Wow. 
Um, and I'm pretty sure I've seen uh, pieces of one of the other ones. Mm. Uh, but the, the the first one I've seen a, a, a number of times, and I, I love that film. I think that's the best of Alex Proyas is The Crow and Dark City. Wow. You know, th- those... I would not put them in the same sentence at all. Um, you don't like The Crow? I don't love The Crow. I love Dark City. I think The Crow, like, it's got, it's, you can see, like, for me, those are two, they're like little accompanying pieces mm. in a lot of ways. It's the problem is Dark City's such a surprise. The Crow has such a rep to it. It's such a cult thing. Yeah. So you come at it and it's like, what, why, do people, why does everyone love this so much? Yeah, people yeah. talk about The Crow way more than Dark City. Nobody talks about Dark City. Mm. Um, Which is unfortunate, really. But I would have liked to have seen this as a, as a reboot with maybe a bit more cash behind it. Um, but yeah. oh well. And, but I mean, like, the, it's not to say that it won't get made. I mean, there have been films that have been in development hell for God knows how long and come out. I yeah. mean, The Man Who Killed Don Quixote is, is a perfect example of that. That was in um, development hell for at least 10 years, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, so you never know. And I, I haven't seen that film. I don't know whether it's any good. It, it seems it's to coming, have gotten a soon. couple of mixed reactions from the early. Um, things, but I think mostly positive out of those. Yep. This director is uh, the guy who just is not doing this now. He's uh, directing The Nun, The Conjuring one. Nice. Mm. Nice. Uh, I'm much rather see that if I'm to be honest. The Controverse. <clears throat> <clears throat> anyway, we'll talk about that again in a few months when someone else gets cast. Yep. Um, uh, speaking of casting, number two, uh, the Spawn reboot again has cast Jamie Foxx as the lead role, which would be Spawn. What is everyone feeling about Spawn? Are you guys a fan of the original 90s one? I got through movie. about <laughs> yeah. halfway through the original and I turned it off. God, no. It's pretty bad. Oh, yeah. I love elements of it. I love some of the production design. Michael Jai White is cool. Um, so, yeah. Actor. I mean, w- w- what do you mean by cool? Though? Like, he's, he's... Just the aesthetics of the film, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. But the, the, he's the not directing a great actor. And, the, and the storyline and the character development is, is yeah. very subpar. Mm. And, and it makes it quite, a, quite, an, uh, yeah. quite an unwatchable movie in a lot of ways. I like the idea of Spawn. I like the, the aesthetic. And I think that if it's treated correctly, it could be a cool film. Um, There's a little animated series of it for a little while on yeah. MTV, I think. But, um, yeah, yeah. I remember I, I watched a couple of some, episodes some of that. Edgy stuff. But it, um, was that um, was that part of the anime thing from a few years ago, or is this is this a long time? ago? Oh, it was a while ago. Okay, yeah. a fair while ago. Um, cool, like l- monsters and and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I'd be I'd be interested to see that put on put on film. Um, is Todd McFarlane directing. I'm pretty this? sure he's directing it. That's that that's concerns odd. me. He's not a director. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's, um, so I, I Todd c- McFarlane created Spawn. And yeah, he's a comic book artist and writer. Yep. I don't think he has any experience in the film industry. Let's have a look. What I know. Let's do the research. Yeah. I, I, Even I in think... terms of being on sets, like I, I don't think many of his properties have been adapted or anything. No, Spawn... And Spawn is very adult. I think you know, this from, is going to have to be I MA. See, it's just Spawn. That's like That's the only thing that really comes up. Okay. I mean, I don't know how to use a search engine, so, um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, um, like, like I said, cool property. Um, I think it could be a cool film. Um, it won't. What about but it won't. Yeah. the fact that Probably. Jamie Foxx is in this? Because I, I, I think he's on a bit of a... Uh, well, listen, I loved him in Baby Driver. I thought yeah. that was one of the strongest performances good, I've seen him. Yep. And I loved him also in um, Horrible Bosses. Yeah. Yeah, fucking hilarious. So I am. I, I, I'm. I, I think that he could. You know, I'm excited to see him in a com- comic book role. Motherfucker Jones is all timer. Now I just said that. I'm remembering Electro from uh, Amazing Spider-Man too. That's, that's not fair. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's what not about fair. Django Unchained? Come on, yeah. give him that at least. Yeah. Um, I Very for true. whatever reason I feel like this character needs a more. It's the voice that's gonna get me with Jamie Foxx. He he has too much of like a raspy kind of high voice. Whereas I think that you know, if you look at guys like you know Michael J. White or who was the other guy that played him, uh, Keith David. Keith David's fucking perfect. They they all have that like low gravelly voice, mm. um, and uh, all I'm seeing is Spawn played by motherfucker Jones, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that and that doesn't do it for me. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting what tone they take because you cast Jamie Fox, you expect somebody who's I don't know, I, I expect a very dark film. With yep. this, well, it'd have to be like that's the property. It's dark. It's you know creepy, and I don't see him as as being able to pull off that character. Now, 
maybe he just hasn't been given the chance. You know, he hasn't he hasn't you know been attached to the right properties to to show that side of him. But um, he as was it quite stands, nuanced in um, Django, right? Uh, I would say he he didn't do a not, typical Jamie Fox role there. And, and Ray, the very true. The but those are not those are not true. dark, creepy. Like I'm not I'm not slamming his acting ability. Nothing to do with that. It's just the this period particular side of you know him is isn't something that we've seen. And and I think there's some things that are just around physicality or you know in terms of voice. You can't fake a lot of that. If nothing else, the CGI cape technology has advanced light years since the first film, so that'll be better. Yeah. That's a important part of the look. Yeah. yeah. The, that first movie, the CGI is legendarily terrible. Uh, terrible. It's like, it's that and the Scorpion King. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but some of the practical um, practical stuff is, is fantastic. That yeah. little clown, creepy-ass clown dude. John Leguizamo, cool. yeah. He looks very cool. Anyway, Spawn. Spawn. Who cares? Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 number yeah. three, um, the uh, ABC revival of Roseanne, the uh, beloved sitcom from the nineties that is probably well up our our market's uh, interests, um, has been cancelled after Roseanne went on a racist Twitter tirade. Yes. Yeah. So apparently she got jacked up in a lot of Ambien, and so she says. So she says, and, and went and. And wrote a lot of interesting. the The actual tweet that she was fired over was one where she compared a former Obama administration person, um, Planet of the where, Apes. Yeah, compared him to Planet of the Apes. Yeah, that's. Um, so, look, I'll be honest. I find it so weird that you know they hired Roseanne, and then we're like, "Wait, you're saying that she's racist? That's so weird. Like, we didn't expect this. Well, we better fire her. Like, what were you expecting?" Like that's that's her bread and butter. Yeah, I guess it, when it's on Twitter, it's a different story. You know, <laughs> you're not allowed. You're allowed to be racist in real life. But, but you not. know what? You know, she. There was another um, instance not too long ago. I think around two years ago, where she had another racist tweet, and it, yeah. it didn't blow up like this one blew up. Because mm. I, I believe, it, like within the hour or so, Bob Iger. It was seven like, hours later. She was fired. Was seven seven hours yeah. later. Okay. Well, Something like Iger, that. So boom, we're done. What's so interesting is is the response almost um, came before the backlash. Like normally, there's like a huge backlash, and then like a week later, a company will be like, "Okay, we got to do something." In in this case, they were just like, "Show's cancelled." Like they stepped right in. Like obviously, there was already you know a news cycle happening, but um, this is one of the quickest responses. We've I seen wonder if the they were hovering over the trigger. I wonder if they they kind of went on this project knowing there's going to be a bit of a risk, knowing that she was a bit of a controversial figure. Maybe they're like, going to can it anyway, and this just seemed like a way to get some goodwill. Could have been that as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, the axe blade was sharply over yeah. the neck. <laughs> apparently, no. Apparently, Say she just, says that she didn't even know that she was that the administ- administration person was black. Yeah. Yeah. she thought that she was Jewish. Which sounds like a super weird thing to say. Did did so the, was the follow up question? What does the tweet mean yeah, then? Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> like I like, don't understand. Like, um, um, <laughs> I don't have an answer to that. Think, did you see um, the tweet Ambien. that Ambien put out? <laughs> yes, they had the biggest mic drop of the year so yeah, far. I yeah. reckon. So we, what was it? It was something to the effect of um, racism is not one of the side effects of yeah, that drug. Yeah, yeah. 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 And whoever's part of their social media team, <laughs> kudos to you, sir. Yeah, Sometimes people well just done. like just hit it so perfectly. Yeah, like, just well done, well done. Yeah. Have so ballsy move from Bob Iger because Bobby. you know, uh, Roseanne is evidently doing spiffingly well in terms of numbers. Like this is not like a sort of average show that 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 isn't bringing in. Like this is bringing in viewers. Mm. There's a massive viewership to this show. So it's it's a big deal that they've just went boom. We're done here. Thanks. Did you guys ever watch the original? No. Oh, maybe no. like an episode or two. Yeah, yeah like I remember it being around. Episode. I think yeah. I've seen bits and pieces. But I yeah. think I think we just missed the bandwagon with our generation. It Definitely, was just... yeah. Well, what's the what, like? Do you guys know anything about this show? Do uh, you do you guys out there know anything about the show? Have any <laughs> of you we heard totally of Roseanne talking about this? Like, is, is hello, anyone hello, interested? Hello, hello. <laughs> it's so weird, yeah. You know what's interesting? It's not not necessarily the show, but the the circumstances around it and how quickly Disney moved on this mm. and and how successful the show is. I found that you know there was no sort of deliberation between them. I think they came to that decision very very quickly and made a, it was a swift move. So I thought that was that was interesting. 
and in, quite impressive in a lot of ways. Yeah, because we've seen some really slow responses to um, mostly like sexual harassment allegations generally yeah. uh, in the past year or so. Like people really like taking their time coming to yes. these decisions, which they eventually come to like anyway. Like so, Oh, God. Like what's happening there? Like, you know, that's Disney <laughs> he's back, as well. Isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, well, he's, he might be coming back. He might not. Um, yeah, the, apparently, I've, I've just looked it up. Apparently, they're they're looking at a reboot for Roseanne without Roseanne. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> which makes sense. I mean, they would have probably crunched the numbers and said, we can probably still milk some shit out of this cow. And, and, and what, 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 so John Goodman would be the main character or? I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I actually don't I know. Genuinely don't, I don't know. know. And I'll be perfectly honest, I don't actually care either. Like, this wasn't a property that really um, interested me to begin with. But you are right. The, the interesting part of this is, is the quickness with which they reacted. And I, I, I personally think that that's down to the fact that they knew that she was, um, in, in certain circles, very controversial. Um, and they were ready with the trigger. Just saying, you know, as soon as she fucks up like this, she's gone. Yep. And we'll get some goodwill out of it. Well, we've got some more goodwill coming up. <laughs> yeah, this is a fun one. Um... Good, good man, Brett Ratner, um, apparently has been going around telling people that he's uh, going to rise from the ashes and direct Rush Hour 4. Um, Warner Brothers, who own the property, are reportedly saying, <laughs> nope, <laughs> that, is, that is not going to happen. Um, a a high-level exec uh, has been quoted as saying, Brett has been walking around telling people he's going to direct a Rush Hour movie because it's his only way back in. Um, he's trying to make believe he's employable. Uh, they said putting together a movie with him would be a suicide mission. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, that's so funny that this is coming out just after um, like Harvey Weinstein's actual arrest yeah. and everything. Do you, like, do you reckon that he's just trying to get like a grassroots movement going? Does he, does he like just wildly overestimate or yeah, overestimate base. not even his fan base, but the fan base for Rush Hour? Rush Hour yeah. Like I yeah. liked Rush Hour when I was a kid. That was a cool film, and I probably watched that like Rush 10 Hour times. Three sucked. Though. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, but like Never the first two it. were a lot of fun. Yeah. And I, I wonder if he thinks that like you know people like us are going to be like, oh yeah, would love to see another Rush Hour. Guys, I did some bad things, but for Rush Hour, come on, yeah, come on. <laughs> we should like, ignore oh, that and no, like, no, 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 <laughs> fuck it. And you know, I wouldn't even say no to a Rush Hour, but I don't need him to direct it. No way. Fuck him. Yeah, totally. So Brett Ratner um, has been accused of numerous things, and uh, none of them good. None of them good. And uh, he's the guy who directed X Men: The Last Stand. Mm, none of them um, good. <laughs> crazy. He he directed Red Dragon, which mm. is um, one of the Hannibal Lecter films. The Edward Norton. Uh, so I totally forgot he did Ray that. Fine, yeah. But yeah, he did um, Rush Hour One and Rush Hour Two. Did you guys see Hercules? Fuck no. Yeah. Wait. The, 2014, the, rock one? the rock 2014 one. one, yeah. There were two in 2014. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, one of them right. rock, yeah. I didn't hate it. Yeah. It wasn't good. <laughs> no, he, he's done nothing for me to like really Tower feel heist, bad about. Bro. <laughs> oh. Tower heist. Fuck that movie. Legendary shit. Yeah, I, I'm just glad that this guy... These last two stories, you know, where, where I feel like it's a sign of the times, like we're moving forward, people, like... It's like, we're not tolerating racism. We're not tolerating sexual harassment. Well, yeah, you were just talking about Tower Heist. That movie's a funny parallel because Matthew Broderick, of course, uh, killed someone in like a, a car accident <laughs> once. Really? Yeah, Ferris Bueller. And then, you know, back in the day, it's like, that's fine. No one needs to know about this. He can just continue having a big career. He can be Simba in The Lion King. It's okay. And now it's just like you tweet something bad. It's like. Nah, there's so much talent in the world. We don't need you. Yeah. Like, there's so many other people who aren't scum yeah. who can do this yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah. And it, I, 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 I approve of that immensely. I'm glad we're cleaning out the closet, you know? I, yeah, I, I think it's, it's both, you know, good and bad in the sense that we don't it, like actors because they're squeaky clean. I mean, I think that... that Same know, with rock stars, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, there, there's a, at a certain level we have to kind of expect that the people that are under the spotlight where their every move and action is critiqued and, and, you know, these are people that don't really have a stable grasp on, on everyday life. Um, you know, I, I, I wonder if the pendulum will, will, will go a little bit too far, but in, yeah, in, in, like in cases instant- like Roseanne where I, I'm just like, eh, fuck you. Yeah. That's enough. You put your foot in it, but yeah, yeah. We're not even talking uh, about is, Brett Ratner, really. Sorry. There is some. There is something to be said about the instant vilification of 
you know, like the like just everyone just comes in and just fuck somebody. You know, maybe you, yeah, <laughs> which you know, is ironically you put, the wrong, you, you put in the wrong tweet, maybe at the wrong time on a slow news day, mm. you're you, done. You're done. You know, and and everyone's on you, and you could be that person. I mean, we saw um, headlines of Morgan Freeman this week mm. as well. Um, that was a weird one. I'd yeah. rather not. That that one hurts. Yeah, that one was sad, man. <laughs> that one was real. Seems sad. like the the swift justice for doing a a bad tweet is a lot more damning than all these sexual <laughs> harassers. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> just get off Twitter, people. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we're gonna stick with this topic for a while. Um, yeah. Next next Jesus, news item. This is the entire <laughs> news week. It's just this. <laughs> I, this was like six months of the year last year, so. Makes sense. Um, 77-year-old Brian De Palma is writing a horror movie that features a Harvey Weinstein-inspired character. Um, we've got a quote from him here. I am writing a film about this scandal, which I am currently discussing with a French producer. My character will not be called Harvey Weinstein, but it will be a horror movie with a sexual aggressor, and it will take place in the film industry. Um, so that's interesting. Does, does this feel like... I think we, last week we talked about people kind of cashing in on current events or current tragedies more specifically. And and that feeling very hollow. Does that ring of of that? I think I would say a cash in. I could imagine Brian De Palma kind of reaching for relevance again. Yeah, I, I think I think what I like about this is that it's not a one for one retelling. Like we we we're going to get some kind of sort of it's based on it's based on. So mm, we're going to get yeah. some some different characters based on different people, but fictionalized mm. and. And I'm, really... a, I'm a fan of De Palma, you know, for anyone who doesn't know Brian De Palma, you know, Scarface, Carlito's Way, um, and Mission Impossible, 1996. <laughs> but, you know, like, he's he's one of those Mission old Mars, school yeah, Mission to Mars. For it, for it to really faves. feel like a cash grab, it would have to be featuring Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> it would. I mean, think about yeah. the way, like, Patriot's Day felt like that. Yeah. Um, what was the one about the uh, oil spill? Yeah, and the, yeah. Uh, and it was the same director and Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, it's like, just like Mark Wahlberg. Hell, he, Fuck, he's probably really smart in that. He's just like <sighs> focusing in on current tragedy and it's it's relevant and it's tragedy in people's minds, bro. Well, I, sells, I wonder how much sells is the word. I wonder how much um that made uh, Patriots Day or whatever. Let's it was have called. a look. Yeah, have a look. Let's have a look on the internet. Yeah, but the crazy thing about that is it was based off a book, so someone had the time to write the book. And then from there, they adapted it into a screenplay and then made a film out of it. Like all that happened within like the space of a couple of years. That shit blows my mind. Kind of unimpressive figures for Patriot's Day. Really? Uh, budget 45 million, box Why? office 50.5 million. Uh, How yeah. did they spend $45 million on that? It's yeah. <laughs> a lot of money. I think 20 million would have gone to Marky Mark. Easily. Yeah. Easily. He's a, he's a 25 million is still too much for me. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next, Ben. A horror movie, though. That's that's interesting. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Um, I'd love it if they angle. actually went like full, like. Uh, slasher. Not even slasher, but like horror, horror, like supernatural horror. And he turns out to be some horrid monster. Yeah, and... like a succubus, except for like, you know, yeah. <laughs> evil movie execs. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to go down that path. I Almost certainly like not. But <laughs> I think it'd thing. be funny. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, this is. Um, Probably the most depressing news so far, actually. This is scraping the barrel. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is called slow news week, people. James Marsden, good old Cyclops, has been cast uh, as a lead in a Sonic the Hedgehog movie. How was this a thing? I um, So do we have any details on this movie? I have no idea. Yeah, I had not heard of this up until this point. I heard uh, There was one point where Paul Rudd was in contention for this role. So, is, I mean, is this a, an animated film that they're... So live, I believe this is with Sony. I believe this is with Sony. And I also believe that it's going to be somewhat similar to Smurfs. Where yeah, we've got the, that. Alvin and the Chipmunks hybrid yeah, yeah. kind of film. Can I just be clear action. that there is a headline that comes up on the front page of Google saying, finally, we're getting a Sonic the Hedgehog movie. What do you mean, finally? Finally. <laughs> Who, who's been sitting there waiting for a Sonic the fucking Hedgehog movie? Maybe okay. they more mean like... It's 30 years since he was relevant. Yeah. <laughs> so it's right. weird that we're getting it now. Or like, finally, this is the end of you know, creativity and humanity as we know it. I mean, it yeah. The day has come. The only relevant Sonic has nowadays is memes. Like, 
if if this movie is about Ugandan knuckles, yeah. then we'll probably have that would probably be a big deal. <laughs> but uh, why don't they make a movie out of Ugandan knuckles? That'd be great if knuckles is in the movie, but they just cast a Ugandan actor. <laughs> <laughs> I just never acknowledge like he's just knuckles. He's the normal oh, version of knuckles. But he's Ugandan. So how well, what's your guy's relationship with uh, Sonic? Oh boy, at the risk of pissing some people off, I fucking hate Sonic the really? Hedgehog. I think yeah? it's such a terrible game series. I don't know why it still exists, why there's three new <laughs> games every fuck. year. And they just keep trying to make weird new spins on it. And they're all terrible. Okay, there are good games in the series, sometimes, accidentally. But um, they just keep tripping over their big floppy red shoes. It's so weird. Like, I'm a Nintendo guy, okay? So I like my Marios. You, you like your Marios or you like your Sonics? And I love 2D Sonic. I love 2D Sonic. I, uh, see, I don't. I it think... hasn't worked in 3D as well, except Sonic Adventure Battle 2, people, oh, on the game. You're one of those guys. What a fucking game. No. Yo, what the fuck? No. no, you're an idiot. I'm not an that idiot. Was, well, that was incredible. Sonic game. fans, really. Oh my god, um, that was amazing. You had the light, you had the light characters and the dark characters, oh, wow. and then you played oh, the Jesus. game and then they converged. That's amazing. Oh, there are a geez. lot of Sonic Such the Hedgehog games. Good what the fuck? Yeah, game. right. Um, no, look, I, I remember playing Sonic. Oh god, in the '90s, um, and it was a, 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 a f- it was a cool game. From what I remember, like I wasn't a purist or anything like that. It wasn't like I didn't care if it had Nintendo or Sega on it. Um, but yeah, well, like I, I think these it, days. it's had its day. To be honest, I, I don't need to see it. Yeah, it, the, it's it's not relevant the, anymore. The it biggest, really isn't. The it's biggest not for issue. You. Sonic has a very passionate fan base. It, I mean, it does, and and I feel like that's why this is getting made is because they they see a, a selection of the the community that's really keen on Sonic. I I can't imagine that that community is that big though. They're big. You saw how many games there are there. Yeah, this yeah. is a franchise. This is a fucking just like all Sega's got left. <laughs> I mean that that taxi. company used to release consoles, you know. We now used to have a developer. we used to have Sega World in Sydney. Yeah, yep. S- Sega used to be humongous. We used to have like yeah, like a whole the, the, theme parky the, thing for him. As I said, Sonic's so, Sonic's biggest problem is in the video game franchise has always been it's never been able to graduate really effectively from two D to three D like something like Zelda or Mario. Those transitioned so amazingly well. Mm. Um, and as a movie. James Marsden, man, I don't think I just I just can't see this work. I'm just picturing this is actually exactly the same as Alvin and the Chipmunks. Yep. <laughs> it's just, well, that, yep. that's Sonic. Yeah. That's um Sonic. <laughs> and Sonic's like, gotta go fast, man, gotta go yeah. fast. <laughs> Singing rap songs and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh fuck. Hey Sonic. You're too oh, slow. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> <Fuck. laughs> visibly chilled. This has been a tough news week. <laughs> well, we've actually got another news story here, which is probably the biggest one we should have started with, to be honest. But um, uh, we have uh, some hints that uh, Wonder Woman two, Patty Jenkins's Wonder Woman two, will be set in uh, the eighties, nineteen eighty four specifically, um, which is I don't think what, what anyone was guessing it would be. No, I think a lot of people guess that it would take place post. Another Justice League. Well, um, I, a lot of people are thinking World War II, even. Or even World War II. I think that that would be a mistake just because we've already had it in World War I. I don't know that we need... Like, it's it's essentially the same backdrop, you know, Great War. Um, but this one, she could punch Hitler. That'd be yeah, fun. never mind. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I can't believe that we... Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll talk about that after. Sorry. I was about to interrupt. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, Stay tuned, people. I don't know what's coming next. Yeah, uh, no, I just I, realized that we missed a major news story, but uh, we'll, okay. we'll talk about that later. That'll be news, news story number eight. Yeah. Look, oh, I, I don't care what they do with this. It's the only DC pro- property that, as far as I'm concerned, is currently working. So, Patty Jenkins, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Yep. Have it in 1984. Have it in 2084. I don't give a shit. It's going to be presumably some level of retconning the series so far because... We know that after World War One, she disappeared from Man's World. Mm-hmm. So unless it's all on, well, she, she can't go back to Themyscira. So I don't know what she's been doing for the, for the century. Yeah, I mean that was that that'll probably be their biggest hurdle to see. Like it, it can't be, um, you know, too in the open, mm. um, or too uh, world destroying stakes. Well, but I guess thinking, I guess yeah. if she's fighting Kristen Wiig's cheetah, then how big is it? Eighty sounds be? more fun for that. <laughs> I hope they, they lean into yeah, it a bit that, and make that, it fun. You know, kind of like what like Thor did. Mm. You know, Thor has that retro 8 bit yeah. kind of um, kind of 80s vibe. I hope they tap into that a little bit. 
because they, you know, the first one, make it different from the first one. Like what they, I, th I, re I think, to be perfectly honest, now I think about it, they're taking a lot of cues from what they did with the Winter Soldier here. Mm. You know, the, the Captain America, the first Avenger was that period piece and then they bring it into more of a modern day context. I think they're kind of trying to do that with this. Um, obviously, it's not present day, but they're bringing it way forward. I, I expected them, as you said, to go to World War II. Mm. Uh, I thought that was kind of like a given in a lot of ways. But um, it, the fact that they're going to the 80s, I think there's a lot more room to play with and, and make, it, make it way different from the first one. Mm. Make it fun. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where the DC kind of vibe goes. We should stop talking about DC movies until after Aquaman comes out because I think the future is so uncertain for yeah. them at this point. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, this might not even get made. I mean, if Aquaman bombs... No, um, I think this is definitely coming. There will 100% be Patty Jenkins' yep. Wonder Woman movie. I don't, know how, I don't know how much mileage the DC EU has in it, but... Um, that as a, a kind of a standalone film you reckon will get made no matter 100%, what? 100%, yeah. But yeah, was, I, I so could agree with that. It was such a big deal, that first one. yeah. yeah. Um, uh, yeah. How are you guys feeling about Aquaman? You guys pumped? I don't have feelings. I'm actually Aquaman. getting more and more excited. I'm not. That's weird. Don't do that, George. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it to yourself. Yeah, I'm it's such excited. a weird like Jay, concept. Uh, the, only, as, the only reason is James Wan. I want to see what that motherfucker's got I'm up in. his sleeves. Yeah. Sleeves. I can't wait to see that disaster. Um, we, yeah. We've, we've one, got a story. We've one got last story. story. Know, we we haven't I, talked I, about I, I your boy, you. Taika Waititi. Oh. And his new project. In which he plays Hitler. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, Jojo um, Rabbit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm look. I'm, this I thought is... I was going to put this in, but I thought I, I literally read the he read the headline and I was like, "That is a story Connor is going <laughs> to get in my grills about as a non-story." <laughs> Why? That that's a, that's awesome. I mean, like we are all fans of Taika Waititi. We love what he does. Um, I mean, I think one of the reasons that Thor uh, three was such a success was his, you know, particular brand of zaniness. Um, and I've been, uh, really excited to see what's next on the horizon for him. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to the, um, the continuation of what we do in the shadows, um, as one of his projects, but this seems like a really cool thing. And I, I love the, um, the take that he's doing on it. Um, he said, there's no better way to, uh, piss off the ghost of Hitler than to <laughs> have a, a Polynesian Jew play him mm. in a movie. And I was like, Fucking that! That sounds about right, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, I, so I, I think this is such an, a crazy sounding project. It's it's hard for me to really know what this is going to be. Mm. Um, so I, I'm 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 really excited, and I'm 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 really excited to see a first trailer. Yeah, and some, get a and vibe of what what this is going to be. Very impressive cast as well. Who else is on it? Uh, Scarlett Johansson, uh, Sam Rockwell, Rebel Wilson. Wow. Um, uh, Rebel Wilson. Thomas and Mackenzie. Uh, and then a newcomer, Roman Griffin Davis. Cool. Wow. And then, wow. And then Watiti as Adolf Hitler. <clears throat> I think his uh, next project after that is actually a stop motion film about Michael Jackson's monkey bubbles. Is it really? Yeah, from Dan Harmon's I mean, production it is. Of company. It is. Wow. Yeah. That should yeah. be something. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had a story as well that we missed out on. Oh, no. Zack Snyder's next project has been announced. Yeah. Surprising no one. The Fountainhead, which is based off Ayn Rand, um, the philosopher's book, The Fountainhead. Yeah. So uh, Snyder's coming back, and it's interesting that he is not doing a comic book film. Well, if you think about it, think about all the films he's done, 300 comic book film, Watchmen comic book film, Man of Steel comic book film, Batman v Superman comic book film, Justice League comic book film. Dawn of so the Dead. The old, the only ones you don't have in there are Dawn of the Dead and Sucker, Sucker Punch. Punch, which is pretty much a comic book film. A terrible comic book film, yeah. So it's interesting that he's going for the Fountainhead. Um, be interesting to see uh, his... Because his style seems, in a lot of ways, well-suited to that comic book you know, aesthetic. Um, yeah, I mean, he's been so influential in it. And... <laughs> It's hard to think of a Zack Snyder film without that aesthetic. So I think he'll still have it. I mean, will he still have it with this film, or will yeah, he... yeah, totally. I mean, Day of the Dead looks like that. Oh, mm -hmm. Dawn of the Dead, sorry. But if you that compare works. something, say, Watchmen to uh, Man of Steel, like Man of Steel has a more of a Chris Nolan handheld kind of vibe. Watchmen is very slick, mm. very like almost like comic book frames, saturated. Yeah, saturated. Um. I think the only surprise here is that he hasn't already made this movie. His 
his OVO has been so clearly influenced by the works of Ayn Rand. Um, I, I, it's it's almost too on the nose that he's actually making an Ayn Rand <laughs> movie. And he's staying on as a producer for Wonder Woman 2. Uh, okay. So I thought everything was severed with um, DC Warner Brothers, but... Well, he didn't not. leave because of like creative differences or anything. I thought... I, I, but the rumors are that he yeah, was fired yeah, off yeah, Justice League, like. <laughs> and and that whole thing with his daughter was just kind of like smoke screen. A smoke screen. <clears throat> yeah, you never know. Oh well. Anyways, oh, well. what time is it, George? It's trailer time. Hey, yay! We got some trailers. Yeah, our our first trailer is Peppermint. I like this one. I like this one a lot. It was like Punisher, Electra as the, the Punisher. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jennifer Garner. She she's been badass before. She's been badass in uh, Daredevil and Elektra and <laughs> yeah. that other one. What was that TV show she was in in the nineties? Alias, was, Alias, mm. Killer, yeah. Killer, man! Wow, you are yeah. bringing up some obscure. What? This is obscure. obscure. Yeah, it's JJ Abrams. Yeah, that's some good shit. So um, um, I, I like the look of this. I thought it had a kind of a nineties. It's straight 90s up, vibe. straight up the Punisher. It's another Punisher yeah. movie. Oh, it's Punisher, it's Equalizer, it's, it's, the fourth it's Taken, film. It's, it's all those kind of films. No, but like really specifically the Punisher, because it's just her family gets killed and then yep. she kills all the people. She becomes this vigilante. She's killing all the crime on the streets. I mean, it, it just seems like another kind of action film. I like the look of it. Yeah, I think it's cool. Mm. Um, to be honest, I'll probably more likely see Equalizer out of the two. You can watch both. I can. <laughs> I can, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can only do one or the other. <laughs> gotta, gotta pick a gender. I, That's, I, I, I'm, why, I, why? 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 <laughs> I, I, yeah, I was really into this. Uh, I'm keen, and I'm keen for us to review it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's not much more to talk about it than that, to be honest. It's just the yeah. Punisher. It is yeah. Just ve- Punisher. Did you guys get a '90s vibe from this? Yep. Kind of like it, it almost even reminded me of Heat. Then like the detectives walking around, walking around the pool, mm. in Los Angeles or whatever. <laughs> it was some know. place. It was some place. It kind of it, to be. It had the vibe of also Luke Cage in that kind of he's like the she's the neighborhood hero, um, beloved by the people. But the cops are like, "Oh, you dirty!" It's it's on tight. Don't worry. <laughs> 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 For some reason, George is worried about my water. Mm. Just Almost as if I spilled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, the only thing I don't like about this is the title. I think that had no bearing on this film. Yeah, why is it called Peppermint? And there was is that, that name? like Peppermint to me. It feels like a graphic novel. Like it feels like more like Atomic Blonde and like that more punky, spunky kind of vibe. Maybe we'll spunky, find out punky. in the film. Possibly, it's By obviously going to be some reference. Her name's yeah. like Jennifer Peppermint or something. Yeah, at the end, she's, she's they're just like, "What do we call you?" And she's like, "Peppermint." She <laughs> like, dives off the building. <laughs> yeah. Does the daredevil like swing <laughs> away? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that um? Isn't the same thing as salt? Wasn't that her name? Yeah, salt, uh, salt, salt. Yeah. Anyway, next up, <clears throat> uh, Hotel Artemis. This looks like an interesting film. This looks awesome. <laughs> um, cool cast. Great cast. Um, amazing. Gives me cast. a John Wick ish feel. Um, like the 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 kind of underworld, you know, second layer of society type thing. Yeah. So the 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 hotel is a, a like a hospital for criminals. Yeah. Is this set in the? Uh, it's set in the future, set in the right? Future, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, really cool cast. Watching the the trailer was very much like, oh, he's in it. Oh, she's in it, and like it just kept coming. Mm. Then Jeff you Goldman know? shows up. You're like, oh, yeah. oh my god, <laughs> hey, Jesus, that's the cherry on top, baby. He seems yeah. to be in like he he's making a resurgence. Yeah. Not that he was ever hey, he disappeared for quite a while. I mean, yeah, he did, but like <laughs> <laughs> he's doing some great menu log ads. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so this, this is uh, written and directed by Drew Pierce, who uh, co-wrote Iron Man three, among some other things, which is cool. Yeah, I like that. yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the name means n- pretty much nothing to me. I love, I love sci-fi films set in the future where the f- it's grimy and gritty and feels lived in and real. You know, it's not mm. everything sleek and and yeah. crystal clean. You know, this, this hotel feels old, and it might it, it might not be. It could you know potentially not set in the future, and I love that. Does it? Um, but we well, said the exact same opposite thing about mute. Um, we said that movie was set in the future, but there was no reason for it to be set in the future. Yep. But yep. So does it bother you that this is set in the future? It doesn't look like the future really has any bearing. Well, on it? it has a bearing on it because there's like uh, obviously some kind of massive crime syndicate, like mm. obviously more as opposed than to it now. is today. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's obviously worse. 
So well, well, it, it depends. Like, because I mean, from the context of if you're in that world, <laughs> you don't need to get relevant. in a fight about this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is how. No, 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 no. Fuck you. No, um. Yeah, uh, the reason I asked whether it was in the future is because I didn't really actually see anything that said it was. Like, did they say... I've know, just I've read it is, but there's a couple of okay. bits of technology you see in there. Yeah, there's, there's obviously a piece of technology, yeah. but what I would have thought would have been really cool is if, like, the you know criminal underworld had access to this technology that most people don't. Um, so it almost it was, feels like a set in a comic book world. So well, yeah, and it, so if it was set in kind of modern day, um, I thought that would have been cool as well. Um, but yeah, very very interested to see how this goes down. Um, the aesthetic of it looks very interesting. Um, yeah, beautifully shot and beautifully beautifully lit. Yeah. And and lit, Dave um, Batista, I, I love that yeah. he is in things now. Mm. He's and in the movies. He is in the movies, in movies. and I'm uh, I'm around it. Why is good? Some of them are good. Um, yeah, I I loved his 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 very brief cameo in in 2049. Um, you know, I thought that that uh, that was really. Really cool. He was really great like watching that movie again. And this the short film that he was in for the, the Blade Runner. Yeah, yeah. Um, Blade, although, do you know what I Blade. um I saw playing the other day, and I, I watched probably about twenty minutes of it. Was uh, God, what was that one he was in uh, that was um Tarantino produced it or, or something? The Man with the Iron Fist. Uh, yeah. Yes. yeah. He could have he could have skipped that one. RZA. Yeah. Russell Crowe. Weird. Yeah, um, was a weird yeah, film. Anyway, hopefully Hotel Artemis doesn't turn into Smoke and Aces because that would be a that'd be a damn shame. It looks more artsy than that. It does, but I think yeah. there's still there's still it would almost be like chance. a Spike Jones movie. Yeah. yeah. Look, I, I no, now that way. you've mentioned, I can see it turning into that because one of those trailers easily. where it's like, oh, the the gun man and the yeah. rubber guy and the other thing. It's like, well, look at all the characters. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. No. Did so you, do I. Like Smoke and Aces? No, not at all. I wanted to like yeah, it. I was, I was asking film. George Ben. Okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I will speak when spoken to. Thank you. Um, third trailer is a new little trailer for Ant Man. Very quick. A little TV spot. But it's actually the one I've enjoyed most out of what's all that? the trailers. <laughs> yeah, same. Um, and mostly for <laughs> that gag of what's that? Oh, maybe I'm not doing it right. <laughs> yeah. um, I need more of them. Yeah. I, I genuinely need I more. I thought of them. it was a really strong uh, trailer. TV spot and it took some of the best ingredients from that trailer that we reviewed a few weeks ago mm. and combined it with a few other scenes just made it look more fun a lot more ghost than we've seen yeah. up to this point kind of got some actual dialogue from her I think she really we? reminds me of Ghost in the Shell for some reason I know it's maybe it's that's because it's called it's Ghost, ghost yeah. and I'm just like <laughs> and she's in a ghost shell ghost in the shell <laughs> whoa <But> the, <laughs> the look of it reminds me of something from Ghost in the Shell you know what I'm saying no <laughs> Um, <laughs> fuck yeah. yeah some of some of the lines in this at least in the trailer just that feel a little bit um forced um you know like the watch this and then the the car gets bigger that kind of shit makes me really cringe um it's like the iron man one my turn <laughs> yeah that kind of stuff and yeah. i really hope that that doesn't translate into the film i'm like i'm just i really hope that that's bad editing on the part of the trailer i'm sure it'll feel um, more um Improvis- improvisational like the first one did. Yeah, I movie. really hope that's the case because mm. I would hate to have this feel like each joke is set up and staged and, and... one-liners. Oh no, 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 no. So mm. I, I need Michael Pena, Pena to be like the whole film. <laughs> I, I would watch just a, a standalone of him. <laughs> they should definitely do that. So they should give him a Netflix series. I endorse that. And 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 the problem <laughs> is is that I I constantly rail against like franchises doing this is yeah. like if you have a character that you really love don't just make a full film of him because that's very like yeah. that's the easiest way to kill that character in, in terms of enjoyment yeah or at the very least if they continue this ant-man franchise they should just keep adding heroes like make it a team thing as it keeps going yeah we get a little ant-man team yeah the avengers hope, guardians and the ant-man team i hope he doesn't become part of like i don't be, i hope he doesn't become a superhero i want him to become a superhero See, I, want him I, to, I want him to become the next ant-man i want paul rudd to die he can get clicked away, and then we can get the, the <laughs> proper new Ant Man. But again, like I, I just think that he's perfectly placed. Like his, um, his, you know, involvement is is perfect. You just said you I, wanted a movie. <laughs> I know, but that that's the problem. Like, I, and this is why I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing, <laughs> I'm bringing myself back into reality because I know, I know that that's Oop, that that's gravity. what I want. But that's when I get it, I'd be really like, oh, it's George's Star Wars corner. <laughs> <laughs> Segway, <laughs> <Fe>, people. <Flawless. laughs> it's time to hop in that Death Star. 
<laughs> grab, grab the keys. <laughs> Take it out of park. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go destroy Tatooine. Put it in reverse. <laughs> beep, beep. Gotta fucking destroy Tatooine because that place is just... It's just a, a place of scum and villainy and I'm we need to it. rid the galaxy of it. Yeah. Um, now, Solo's been out second weekend and... Uh, Solo's not doing that well at the box office. 77% drop. Solo is not doing well and it's really underperforming. Um, now, from the fir- the second weekend, it's going to hit around 28, 29 million um, domestically in the United States. And to kind of give that some context, Rogue One in the second weekend earned 64 million. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is... This is... This is... This is um, in terms of, in comparison to that film, mm-hmm. this is really underperforming. And this is their most expensive Disney oh, Star Wars easily. by far. For, mm. for all the wrong reasons, though. Mm. Yeah. Um, this is really interesting because I, I was watching a YouTube video um, by Jeremy Johns. Yeah. Um, and he mentioned something that really resonated with me, which is he's not used to, to having a Star Wars film not be the black hole of the box office. You know, when you talk about Star Wars films, it's how are other films going to be affected by this behemoth? Mm. And in this case, it's it's looking at um, Avengers and Deadpool two and saying, "Ooh, do you think that that Solo is going to make it through?" Can Star Wars compete with Deadpool? That's that's so bizarre (laughs) to think about Mm. that. Nuts. Um, And I mean, I I don't know whether it's I, I have a feeling it's more the bad press than the actual film itself because the film itself was surprisingly good. Um, com- you know, compared to what I thought it was going to be. Um, Do you think so- it was too close after The Last Jedi? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes. I think larger to that, it's just Star Wars isn't that special anymore. We were only on the fourth one, but in, you know, four years or whatever it is, they've saturated the market with Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it's not... Three and a half years, December I, 2015. I think what they're trying to do... <laughs> Two and um, a half years. One and a half, yeah. well, yeah. <laughs> One and a half days. <laughs> um, I think what they're trying to do, and I think this is a huge mistake, is I think that they're trying to create an Avengers or an MCU-style MCU yep. universe. They're definitely doing Which that. is ironically, we, we just had a, a show where we talked about what we'd like to see in the universe and, what and you know, the, kind of the current state of the Star Wars franchise. Um, and I think upon first visiting, a couple of us were fairly positive on that idea. Um, and I don't want to say who, not me. Uh, um, but they wanted to see a little bit more of the, the that kind of universe style building. Um, but I, for whatever reason, I don't think it works with Star Wars. I think Star Wars should be an event. I think it should be, you know, every two years you get a Star Wars film. And I think that, that you need that buildup. I think that that needs to be a really big event. Um, and I don't think they allowed the time or the kind of grandeur to do that. I think I think they're not going to do that. So what what's the next best you know, result from it, you know, make them yearly, make Uh. the episode ones feel more special, more grandiose, make those kind of happen on a less regular basis and and, they need do more of these anthology films. And they need to adjust their own expectations. They can't be spending this kind of money on a solo prequel. Like if they want, if really good, they should have gone with their gut (laughs) and, and, but they, were, they made two movies. They, they should have gone with their gut and gone with the Lord and Miller version and just rolled the dice. You know, was that good gold stick? dice? Well, yeah. If they want to make an MCU, they have to be prepared to have some movies that are just moderate successes, mm-hmm. like some middling ones. You know, they not everyone's going to be a billion. Yeah, yeah. This is go- this is a Thor one. This is uh... they they need to to weave the nav- narrative in their own favor. Where if this makes you know six hundred, seven hundred million, that's like. That's great. Yeah, yeah. That did, that's cool. good for what that was. Yes, exactly. as opposed to this is a Star Wars movie that didn't make a billion dollars. <laughs> We're fucked. Yeah, um, and I think they've kind of shot themselves in the in the foot because, uh, you know, I, I was mentioning this before. Like, you look at the Force Awakens and the Last Jedi, and they're like they're big movies. They're really like, <laughs> and I think that if they were to try and make a little bit of the lower budget ones, um, the ones like your Thor twos or whatever, I think they the the a lot of Star Wars fans would be like, oh, this is counter to what I come here for. Mm. Um, so. They want the full shebang. I watched this um, uh, video this week by John Campier, um, Five Reasons Why Kathleen Kennedy Should Step Down from Lucasfilm. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Fuck. Fuck and one of his points was very interesting. Racist um, tweets. Too many of them. <laughs> uh, she, one of his points was she doesn't have a good grasp on uh, the team that she uh, 
brings in, namely the directors. So at at most like that she's employed Gareth Edwards. A lot of and, firings. And at the end brought in Tolly Gilroy that like that obviously mm. like the brief wasn't met in execution mm. same thing happened with Lord and Miller mm-hmm. the brief they they agreed upon something and really late in the game brought in someone else and mm. completely revamped that same again with episode 9 brought in Trevaro he did two scripts mm. um, not as late in the game obviously it's just kind of I guess learned the lesson there a little bit but you know what I mean like not having that grasp on and saying this is the project like how many times has Feige booted someone off a film yeah like has they, he booted anyone off an mcu film i mean yeah in I humans mean, changed in humans changed from a film to to a tv series but and um he's kind of run the gauntlet patty, I mean, patty jenkins they had some trouble with okay. and alan taylor that movie was pretty much wrestled away from him i think but that was early on early Even Ant, on ant-man had and a since then change. they've had a very good relationship with yeah. their directors and ant-man ant-man yep obviously ant-man very true very um true. But yeah, it, look, I, mean, I, I think I mean, that uh, let's let's say it's eighteen movies versus four movies. Yeah, mm. look, I, I think that while I believe yes, the buck does stop with Kathleen Kennedy. Let's not pretend that you know suddenly the entire franchise is going to be saved if Kathleen Kennedy stands down. I think people need to be a little bit more realistic than that. The these big, dis, you know, the direction of the the franchise is not really like creatively is not really being defined by Kathleen Kennedy. And let's also just put into context that the franchise is doing amazingly well overall. Yeah, yeah. Like they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're I doing mean, true. Great. Like Last Jedi was Last Jedi was de- divisive, but realistically, the entire Star Wars since the original trilogy has been divisive. I mean, the prequels were universally hated up until what, like five years ago, when in, in, inexplicably people started loving them. Um, you know, uh, the la- um, Force Awakens was, was divisive. Rogue One was divisive. Um, the Last Jedi was divisive. On, I mean, on, on the other hand, to maybe contradict myself, the the franchise is on a bit of a downward trend, um, in a lot of ways financially, I would say, um, which yeah, instead of making, we'll see how Episode Nine goes. You know, well, we've got eighteen thing. months now until Episode Nine. I think that hype and that desire for a Star Wars film that'll be the first time since the Force Awakens to really feel like. Ugh, we need this. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. That's yeah. how I feel anyway. Yeah. Well, because if, it, if, it's, if it's third of the three main episode ones, yeah. box office wise, that, that, that'll not be a good trend for them. Whereas, you know, something like the MCU just keeps going up and up mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Um, another story I just wanted to chuck in this week was um, about one of the creative decisions Ron Howard did in the solo a Star Wars story. And he reduced the um, Han's time in the Imperial Navy. So, um, you know, in our review uh, for Solo Star Wars Story, which you, you guys can go check out, um, I talked about how I wanted a bit more of that. Um, and kind of yelled you, at you for a while. You said specifically <laughs> how you didn't. And so I was thinking it's interesting that this was in here and it was cut. Mm. Yeah. So I've got a quote here from one of the screenwriters, John Kasdan, Lawrence Kasdan's son. Um, and he said, um, in fact, we hope and I believe that when you finally get a Blu-ray of this film, you'll see a terrific scene with Han in aerial training and then getting kicked out of aerial training. Um, and he also like Tag and Bink, said, I believe. The classic Stormtrooper characters from the comics. Sorry? Tag and Bink, I think you're in that scene. Yep. Yep. There's, there's and they've been cut. They've been yeah. cut. So, so yeah, I, I just thought it was interesting because I really want to see that scene. I want to see if that scene adds anything to the narrative because mm. I felt they glazed over the fact that Han was in um, the Empire and I want to see more of that. Um, but obviously, clearly for sort of um, speed and efficiency, they, they deleted it from the film. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. So I, 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 did, I, I think the movie definitely didn't need to be longer, um, but I could imagine time being spent better elsewhere. Um, unsure on that one. All right. Let's cap things off with question of the week. Uh, we've got a question here from Joe bah- Joel Bahari. Thanks heaps, man, uh, for sending this in. And this is about Deadpool 2. So, um, guys, if you haven't seen Deadpool 2, get out of here. Um, <laughs> go on, get, go. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so, Deadpool 2 spoilers coming up. Uh, the question is, do you think that a lack of a villain like Francis from the first movie was lacking from the sequel? I don't know about you, but for me, that was really one of the many things that made the first movie the gold that it was. Uh, so, I guess there's two parts of this, um, you know, the difference between Deadpool 1 and Deadpool 2 villains and actually Francis being a great villain in the first one. Yeah. Um, 
I think that you might be onto something, Joel. I think it's Joel, right? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Um, I think that, and, and, and not necessarily because it needed a villain per se, but it gave um, the first Deadpool a grounding point where you always knew where the character needed to go and there was a very clear line. And that's Much what more was focused. Yeah, that was really what was great about the first one is that it was a a fairly simple story that that um, that was being told. And one of the major criticisms we had of this one is that there were too many um, directions that it was trying to Plot go. Threads. Like it was trying to deal with the aspect of family, and it was trying to deal with the aspect of loss, and it was trying to deal with the aspect of Cable and X Force and. Juggernaut. Juggernaut and, you know, the bad guys being, you know, the um, pedophiles or the, you know, whatever you call them, the dude with the weird hair. Mm. Um, and th- that that was really distracting. I mean, the second time I watched it, I really kind of went into that with that in mind and that it was it was distracting. And I feel like they could have done away with a couple things and just really focused in on it. Yeah, there was nothing close to a compelling villain in Deadpool 2. Um, I love Cable, though. Like, I, I wanted Cable's more good, of Cable. But, but he was, you know, sort of an antagonist, but halfway through he was yeah. but just I, on the side of the I angels. I think Francis, Francis, for me, is not necessarily a great villain, but the way his story threads in with what happens to Deadpool mm-hmm. is what really makes and sells that story and the drama there. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily think he's that much of a compelling you know, performance or character yeah. or anything, but yeah, I don't there's, know, I, more, I do. there's more um, there's more ties and there's more emotion and there's yeah. more drama. And yeah, yeah. I, I think he is great. I mentioned this in the review. I think Ed Skrine does a great job with, with what he has in that role. And, it's fairly um, one-dimensional, though. No, totally, but um, I just think he makes it work really well, and I think he is, I think he is compelling when, whenever he's dealing with Wade. Yeah. You know? I think that, um, like, he's just a dick in that film, and I think that suits... Deadpool perfectly. But that but and, and that's a great thing for a villain to be. When you actually want to see the villain get punished by the good guy, that yep. means so much more than when you're watching, you know, Malekith the Accursed and you're like, Thor's doing this now. Mm-hmm. This doesn't mean anything. <laughs> but like when you like you when do, Deadpool well, yeah. when Deadpool fucking shoots him in the head at the end, you're like, fuck yeah. <laughs> I think that's a good villain. Yeah. 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 So that, that's kind of where I stand on it. I, I've only seen Deadpool 2 once, so I need to go check it out again. And yeah. I need to go see Solo again, I feel. Mm. Yeah, I've we keep that saying the, that, I've left but that it's, on the side. it's um, I don't know that it, it's really Necessary. needs a second viewing. Maybe I'd, I'd be interested to watch it more out of curiosity than an actual desire to watch it again. Mm. Um, like I, I wouldn't do it for enjoyment. <laughs> we don't do any of this for enjoyment, yeah, yeah, Connor. Yeah. This is a job. <laughs> I don't watch movies Shit. <laughs> to enjoy them anymore. <laughs> Just stare at them, taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's a truth bomb yeah. if I ever heard one. <laughs> I watched them for sustenance. <laughs> and a great way to finish this week's series episode. Series, what am I talking about? <laughs> but we made series it, Series finale. Yeah. We, we made it. The, the laptop's intact. I was going to say, more, more importantly, still... your laptop made it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, thanks to everyone who came to see Akira uh, on Friday and Saturday. That was fun. Um, and uh, Thanks, Connor. <laughs> yeah. I forgot to say that. that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, um, yeah, I, I did the speech solo. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys. We'll be back next week with Incredibles Two. Whoa. I'll review for Incredibles Two. It's film. insane that it's actually coming out. I and feel like there's been two. no advertising for that movie. Are we going to do a Hereditary review? We have to. What's that? Hereditary a horror movie. What? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I was like a Hereditary. Is, <laughs> that, is that what like reviewing? Is the, that the is sequel? that another Pixar film? <laughs> oh. is, that, is that like reviewing Incredibles One in anticipation for <laughs> yeah. is that Hereditary review? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Fuck yeah. Mm. That's supposed to be one of the scariest movies of all time. The scariest. Yeah, movie. They, they, the scariest and best film ever made. Yeah. Ever. Full Market, stop. Ever. Marketing one hundred and one. It's like it's like seeing a sign saying the best pie shop in Australia. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic yeah. that I found this. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> while, and while I was so drunk, amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Farewell, farewell, people. Goodbye. See you. See you. Love you. See you, Benny. Goodbye. See you. Goodbye, Goodbye George. Bye. <laughs>